Press Play Lifestyle Inspired is a podcast that provides inspirational content on topics to help you find the resources, tools, and support you need to be your best inspired self. My name is Jackie Schwab, and I will be your host for today's podcast. Getting by with a little care from yourself. Habits for self-care. If you're like most parents, you do a pretty good job on making sure that the small humans living in your home are taken care of. You might even spend some time considering the needs of your spouse or even your co-workers. Yet one might guess, and I'm one, that you forget the most important person often and more often than you'd like. You. Yes, I know, you're tired of hearing about the oxygen mask theory and how if you don't take care of yourself, no one else will do it. Well, other than the fact that those things are totally true, I wanted to tell you what not taking care of me did to me and my family. You see, I worked a lot. I was actually texting the office while in labor with my fourth child. That's not a badge of honor for me, though. It's more of a shame marker that I'm trying to move past. I worked. I took care of the kids. I ran a few businesses. I kept doing all the things until things started to go wrong. Again, this time my business was failing. My husband lost his job. My children were struggling with some things in school and I was gaining weight and my narcolepsy was getting harder and harder for me to manage with medication. I started to wake up every day in pain, pain with no source, just pain. It started to hurt to move every day. It hurt to get out of bed. I started having more trouble sleeping, which is pretty hard to do considering I have narcolepsy. I struggled to keep my weight even maintained and definitely wasn't under control. The more I neglected myself and tried to work by work my way out of my problem, I realized my old coping methods were not working. I had to do one thing that I honestly was not sure how to do. I had to focus on me. The better care you take of yourself, the better you'll be able to care for others. Since I write, coach, and teach about habits now, it would make sense that I would have used habits as a way to start taking care of myself. If you guessed that, you'd be right. So here are a few of the small changes I started to make to take care of myself. Maybe they can help you take better care of you too. Habits to find myself. Well, there are about five main habits that I adopted over the last two years, and it did take two years, and I know that there will be more that I should adopt, but these are the ones that I've got so far, right? Um, however, of all the things that I did, these five are the ones that have made the biggest ad- impact for me. Number one, I went for a walk every morning during the summer and every morning at the gym in the winter. I probably would say this is my keystone habit, and it really does continue to be. If I miss a walk, I tend to feel like crap. It's become so important to me that I've even found odd ways to get my walk in when I'm in a different location than normal. Or if I didn't get my walk in during the day, I'll walk around my office or take calls on the phone. So super important for me. Number two, eat healthier. Not healthy, not super healthy, not super wonderful, great, just healthier. I'll always be working on this one because mama like food, but mostly I'm a huge fan of Cheetos. I started to eat a doTERRA Slim and Sassy smoothie mixed with fresh fruit every day. Then I started to make them for my oldest daughter. That took some time to become a habit, and then we both started eating jar salads for lunch. We do better during the school year since lunch times are set, but we still are working towards finding healthier ways to eat during the non-school year. And we have five healthy breakfasts and lunches for a week. So dinner, well, my husband's an amazing cook, so I eat whatever he makes. Yeah, I'm not perfect, but eating healthier has definitely been good for me. Number three, meditate daily. Sincerely, one of my most favorite additions to my lifestyle. I actually started this not that long ago. Um, However, just focusing on my breath has been amazing. I studied under Dr. Susan Taylor of the focused awareness meditation technique. I use it daily. I also use Insight Timer for little meditation breaks. Even one to five minutes a day gives me a better handle on my emotions. Sleep hygiene routine. Most people need like seven hours a night. I need more. I just do. 
I've got narcolepsy, so it's really important that I have a routine for sleep down more than anything. I do the same thing before bed every single night. I go to bed at the same time. I get up at the same time. It helps me keep my mind sharp and my energy up. And then the last one, drink more water. This actually turned into a few different habits, and I think that's one that's interesting to know. Um, Every single morning I get up and I go to the restroom, and the first thing I do is drink some water before I brush my teeth. That's a single habit. The second drink more water habit is every single time I get into my car, I drink some. Uh, I drink water before I go to the gym. I drink water when I'm on a walk. I add water to my dinner. And sometimes I'm not so great at that. So it's the one I'm still working on. But what I found is I needed to make one routine of drinking water before the next one. So I had a better chance of getting to my water goals. And of course, I created a bunch of other habits too, but these seem to be my personal keystone habits. And if I mess any of them up, my weight goes up, my brain gets foggy, I lose my temper more, and I have less control of my emotions. So what are your keystone habits? Do you know? Need some support getting them? Let me know. Check me out on coach.me, press play lifestyle. And if you don't want to check me out, there's a bunch of other amazing coaches that you can look at too. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.